Hello, you are listening to Dr. Shushma Singh today in Unit 2, Change, Modernization and Development. We are going to start topic Development Conditions and Barriers. Now that we have covered the concept of social change, modernization and the theories of modernization, let us move on to the last subtopic of this unit that is development. There is no definite definition of development, it is in strictly a normative term which at times has meant economic growth, structural economic change, autonomous industrialization, capitalism or socialism, self-actualization and individual, national, regional and cultural self-reliance. Withstanding such variations, there has been a large agreement on the fact that the human beings are at the center of development and that economic growth is a means to an end, that is human development. Development is a function of society's capacity to organize human energies and productive resources to respond to opportunities and challenges. Scholars often trace the emergence of higher, more complex, more productive levels of social organization through the stages of nomadic hunting, rural agrarian, urban commercial, industrial and post-industrial societies. And in the process, try to examine ways by which new activities were introduced by pioneer imitated, resisted, accepted, organized, institutionalized and assimilated into a culture. Organizational development takes place on a foundation of four levels of infrastructure, physical, social, mental and psychological. All these four types of resources contribute to development of what only the most material are inherently limited in nature. The productivity of resources increases enormously as the level of organization and put of input of knowledge rises. The human resource is recognized as the driving force and primary determinant of development. The evolution of social institutions act as a powerful stimulus for development by increasing the frequency, intensity and efficiency of social interactions. This evolution has moved through three successive but overlapping stages of development, physical, vital and mental which can be described in terms of type of organization predominant during that stage. Now let us discuss suggested conditions for development. Surplus energy, awareness of opportunities and the aspirations of for advancement are preconditions for prepare society for new development initiatives. This is not a linear process. The three factors interact with one another in complex way to generate a growing pressure and ground swell of new activities. Accomplishment at a previous level helps release energy and aspiration for further accomplishment. Energy makes for greater alertness and awareness. Awareness of what others are doing evokes greater aspirations and provokes energetic responses. The process spirals back on itself constantly reinforcing the forward momentum while 
at the same time each new level of achievement brings a certain measure of satisfaction and security that relieve the pressure for further effort alternations between rising urge and rising satisfaction are one reason for the modulating rhythm of progress and stagnation that is often observed when these three factors are present in a requisite manner the society is subconsciously prepared for change let us try to understand each of them the first is energy Excess energy is an essential condition for development the onset and speed of physical and biological reactions depends on seed crystals crystal catalyst essential nutrients the frequency and intensity of interaction between elements and conducive environment conditions so also the onset and speed of social development depends on the seeding of new ideas in society awareness of new opportunities social aspirations and attitudes of to change the catalytic role of individuals the presence of essential resources and instruments the frequency and intensity of social interactions social preparedness and support for new activities development in an expression of social creativity it requires immense investment of creative energy for society to experiment with new modes of activity take the risk associated with change break the active resistance and passive inertia of fixed habits raise standards of functioning to higher levels acquire new skills and build higher order organizations moving from one level of social organization to another requires the accumulation of surplus energy as in the conversion of matter from a liquid to a gaseous state development is the result of surplus energy moving vertically and being organized at a higher level rather than merely being spent in horizontal expansion at the same level the higher level organization is able to utilize the energy more productively live indomitable energy has been an outstanding trait of great political leaders such as napoleon churchill and gandhi and business leaders such as andrew carnegie henry ford and tom waston of ibm inventor thomas alva edison was known to work for days on and without sleep in the process of developing 1100 patentable inventor inventions and founding the general electric company organizations that are growing rapidly share the same characteristics which is apparent even to casual visitors to high tech company in silicon valley energy is highly visible in progressive urban centers around the globe from new york and london to hong kong and tokyo it is therefore not surprising that this characteristics is found abundant in societies that have achieved a high level of development or that it becomes increasingly pervasive as societies enter the take off phase the importance of surplus energy is most dramatically illustrated by two conditions under which it is 
unable to accumulate or express itself war and dictatorship war destroys infrastructure and interferes with production and trade it physically saps the energy and resources of a country the threat of war keeps those energies perpetually directed toward the self defense rather than self development dictatorship on the other hand can spur development efforts up to a point using the threat or pressure of coercion to channel initiative in desired direction but dictatorship also blocks the free emergence of new ideas and fresh initiatives which are the seeds of social innovation it can ensure obedience to authority but does not spur entrepreneurship and innovation the end of federalism in western europe was an important contributor to the onset of the mercantile era and founding of the great european commercial empires the further transition from monarchy to democracy stabilized the internal order and provided the social foundations for the industrial revolution it stimulated innovation by encouraging the free exchange of ideas and provided incentives for greater individual efforts by legally safeguarding property from arbitrary confiscation here we want to close this lecture thanks for listening